now broadcasting from beautiful downtown Tallahassee, it's Classic Movie Reviews with Snark. Welcome to today's show. My name is John. As always, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes or follow the links to social media in the podcast show notes. You can also go to snarkymoviereviews.com to read notes, bios, and other random movie thoughts. Remember, the show is completely free and independent. All I ask is that you jump over to iTunes and give me a review. Today's movie is Creature from the Black Lagoon, 1954. The creature, a.k.a. the Gill Man, was part of the second generation of Universal Studios' classic movie monsters. This movie was filmed at the height of the Cold War, and the creature faces the same issues with alienation that would continue to grow in the aftermath of the Cold War. As a monster, the Gill Man was a little more complex than the others. He didn't seem to be evil and fought after he was attacked. This movie was directed by Universal's Jack Arnold, who made, among other films, Came from Outer Space, 1953, Creature from the Black Lagoon, 1954, the sequel, Revenge of the Creature, 1955, Tarantula, 1955, The Incredible Shrinking Man, 1957, Monster on the Campus, 1958, The Space Children, 1958, and the comedy, The Mouse That Roared, 1959. You know I love the Monsters television show, and at one point, the Gill Man, as Uncle Gilbert, appeared in an episode. This movie was originally shot in 3D and required gray-tinted glasses to watch. The 3D movie fad was ending by the time this movie was released, and it was mostly seen in 2D. So, on to the cast. The lovely Julie Adams played basically the only female in the movie. Adams played Kay Lawrence, who was a brilliant scientist that the script occasionally turned into a helpless female and someone prone to make poor decisions. Adams grew up in Arkansas and moved to California to pursue acting. She worked part-time and spent the other time studying and looking for acting work. Her first movie was Red Hot and Blue, 1949, followed by the lead in The Dalton Gang, 1949. Over a five-week period, she appeared in six more quickie westerns. She continued to make westerns such as one of my favorites, The Man from the Alamo, 1953, and The Mississippi Gambler, 1953. She starred with the mule Francis in Francis Joins the Wax, 1954. Of course, that same year she was in The Creature from the Black Lagoon, 1954. Julie, clad in her white one-piece swimming suit, swimming synchro with the Gill Man is one of the most memorable scenes in the film. She continued to make movies, but moved heavily into television. She has done voice work in film up to 2011 and is still alive. Richard Dennings played the role of the overbearing and publicity-obsessed boss of the Marine Institute, Mark Williams. Dennings was born in Poughkeepsie, New York, but the family relocated to L.A. Denning eventually went to business school and received a master's in business administration. During World War II, he joined the Navy and served on a submarine. Following the war, Denning became bored with accounting and began acting in a small theater group. He won a radio contest and was given a screen test by Warner Brothers, who passed on the actor. He was later signed by Paramount. He had a great movie career through the late 1950s. Some of his films include The Buccaneer, 1938, King of Alcatraz, 1938, some Like It Hot, 1939. Farmer's Daughter, 1940. Black Beauty, 1946. Okinawa, 1952. Mr. and Mrs. North, 1952. Target Hong Kong, 1953. Creature from the Black Lagoon, 1954. Creature with the Atomic Brain, 1955. And An Affair to Remember, 1957. After moving into television for a few years, he retired to Hawaii. But he picked up a recurring role on Hawaii 5 1968 to 1980. He was married to actress Evelyn Ankers of the Wolfman 1941 fame. Denning died in 1998 at the age of 84. Anthony Marino played the role of scientist Carl Mia, who found the fossilized Gill Man hand. He was born in Spain in 1887. In the 1920s, Marino was a rival to Rudolph Valentino, playing the role of the Latin lover. Marino worked with the Gish sisters, Garbo, Gloria Swanson, and Mary Pickford. Marino also worked extensively in serials and was known for cliffhangers. Sound movies put a damper on his acting because of his heavy Spanish accent. He transitioned into character parts and worked in Hollywood until the late 1950s. Marino died in 1967 at the age of 79. Richard Carlson played the role of Dr. David Reed, the love interest of Kay, 
and the scientists trying to stop Institute boss Dr. Williams from exploiting the creature. Carlson came from an affluent family and received a master's degree in English. However, he quickly lost interest in academia and began acting. He bought his own theater in Minneapolis and made himself the star. By the age of 23, he was working on Broadway with actors such as Ethel Barrymore, Jimmy Durante, and Ethel Merman. He was offered a contract by David O. Selznick. Following The Young and Hard, 1938, Carlson moved to California. Many of his roles were stinkers, like Beyond Tomorrow, 1940, or No, No, Nanette, 1940. One of his best performances was in William Wyler's The Little Foxes, 1941. He made a couple of more movies, White Cargo, 1942, and Highway by Night, 1942, before taking a break to attend World War II. John Wayne stayed at home. Following the war, he was in King Solomon's Mines, 1950. For some reason, he was shifted to sci-fi films like It Came From Outer Space, 1953, The Magnetic Monster, 1953, and The Aquatic Creature from the Black Lagoon, 1954. Carlson then moved to directing, where he made the stinker Riders of the Stars, 1954. Later, he did better with movies such as Four Guns to the Border, 1954, and Kid Rodello, 1966. During the height of McCarthyism, Carlson took a television role, I Led Three Lives, 1953-56, to about a man that infiltrated the Communist Party for the FBI. He had another series, McKenzie's Raiders, 1958-59. to He spent the rest of his career working on the popular television shows. Carlson died in 1977 in California. The boat captain Lucas was portrayed by Nestor Paiva. Paiva was born in California and graduated from UC Berkeley. He, like Michael Marx, had the ability to play multiple ethnic roles. From 1938 to 67, Pavia played generic South Americans, Spaniards, Greeks, Russians, Portuguese, Italians, Indians, and Arabs. He even played an African American on the radio. Whit Bissell, from episode 31, Warlock, 1959, and many others, played a fourth person from the Institute, Dr. Edwin Thompson. There were two gill men one for the land and one for underwater. The harder of the two was performed by Rico Browning. Browning was born in Florida in 1930. Early on, he started diving in local water shows. In his 20s, he began directing underwater shows at Wikiwachi Springs. Browning had to hold his breath up to four minutes for the underwater shots as the suit did not have a scuba tank. After playing the Gill Man in three films, Creature from the Black Lagoon, 1954, Revenge of the Creature, 1955, and The Creature Walks Among Us, 1956, Browning started working in films related to water. At Tours Florida Studio, he worked on Sea Hunt, 1958, The Aquanauts, 1960, and Flipper, 1963. He directed, did stunt work, and worked as a stunt coordinator. Ben Chapman played the Gill Man on land. Chapman was born in California to Tahitian parents. Raised in Tahiti, he returned to the United States in 1940. His work as a dancer got him his first film role in Pagan Love Song, 1950. Except for the Korean War period, he worked steadily as an extra in films. Story The movie begins with the creation story from the Bible. It quickly switches to the Amazon jungle, where geologist Dr. Carl Mia Anthony Marino has discovered a fossilized claw sticking out of a mud bank. I have never seen anything like this before. Is it important? Yes, I think it is. Very important. We will take one more picture. Then we will dig it out. He explains to his two native assistants that he has to go to the Institute of Marine Biology to get help. Unseen by the men is a similar claw reaching up in the water and then sliding back underwater. At the Institute, Kay Lawrence, Julie Adams, drives Dr. Mia out to the diving platform where ichthyologist Dr. David Reed, Richard Carlson, is diving. Mia asked the pair why they are not married yet. Are you two married yet? No, no data says we're together all the time anyway. Might as well save expenses. Did you ever hear of two living as cheaply as one? That's what I keep telling him, Carl. Well, I'm waiting for Williams to give her that raise. Then she can afford me. <laughs> Mia says that the skeleton is from the Devonian age, which is roughly 420 million years ago. It was also known as the age of fish. On the boat ride back, Dr. Reed throws a barb at his boss, Dr. Williams, Richard Denny, saying that he is a publicity hound. Kay defends Williams with the no bucks, no buck Rogers argument. Well, he 
boys know what makes this bird go up. Funding makes this bird go up. That's right. No bucks. No Buck Rogers. And uh, press over there. Hey, over here. Hey, they all want to see Buck Rogers, and that's us. Hey, who they never say had a PhD, Dr. Reed, Dr. Williams, and Dr. Mia decide they will make up an expedition up the Amazon to look for more fossils. Well, why don't we make up the expedition? <laughs> We're here now, and after all, it does come under the heading of our work, doesn't it, David? It certainly does. More and more, we're learning the meaning and the value of marine research. You know what? I'm going to give Kay a PhD. From now on, she will be referred to as Dr. K. Dr. Thompson, with Bissell, is added to the expedition at some point. Back at Dr. Mia's jungle campsite, the two native assistants are attacked by the creature and killed. At this point, you only see the hand of the creature. Sometime later, the group heads up the river in the boat, the Rita. Now, this boat, if not built by the same people that built the African Queen, they at least use the same maintenance company. It was a POC, to put it nicely. The Rita was commanded by Captain Lucas, Nestor Paiva, a no-nonsense river man that knew how to get things done and understood the dangers of the river and the jungle. Dr. Williams is being a pompous ass on the way up. Why you find anything better than this barge? Well, I guess not many ships want to go up river as far as we're going. We didn't exactly expect to get the Ile de France either. You don't like the river? What the doctor meant, Lucas? I'm more what the doctor means. But what for I need this sweet smelling boat to carry fish on this crazy river? <laughs> How do you like the best cabin on the river, Miss Lord? I love it. When they get to the camp, they find the two native assistants ripped to shreds. They chalk it up to a jaguar or something, clean up the mess, and move into the tents. Nope, wouldn't do it. Expedition is over once somebody is murdered. While the others are looking at the murders, Dr. K hangs out by the water and gets spotted by the gill man. They work for eight days trying to find fossils to no avail. Reed gets the idea that the fossils may have washed downstream to a lagoon, the Black Lagoon. That sounds nice. Captain Lucas explains that a lot of people go to Black Lagoon, but nobody ever comes back. On that note, Dr. Williams decides to push on. During the trip to the lagoon, Drs. Reed and Kay talk of their future together. As soon as they kiss, Dr. Williams comes out looking all butthurt and demonstrates his pneumatic spear gun. The Rita is squeezed into the narrow opening of the lagoon. When they get there, they put out the boat net to get a fish sample and Drs. Reed and Williams suit up with aqua lungs to get a rock sample from the bottom for Dr. Mia. Dr. Williams is starting to get a little crushy on Dr. K. I'll get the aqua lung. You be careful, David. We don't know what's down there. I hope you're afraid for me, too. Of course, Mark. The two divers get their rocks, but miss the fact that they are being stalked by the creature. Back on the boat, Dr. Williams gets jealous of Drs. Reed and Kay. Dr. Kay defends Dr. Williams, and you wonder about their past relationship. To get away from all the testosterone on the Rita, Dr. Kay goes for a swim in her stunning one-piece white bathing suit. The creature is really interested, and he swims along below her. They do some great synchronized swimming together. When the creature touches her foot, she dives down to investigate. Captain Lucas calls her back to the boat. The creature follows Dr. K back to the boat and gets caught in the net. They try to pull the net up, but it almost breaks the boom. Finally, the creature tears through the net, leaving behind a claw. Dr. K gets the idea that that might have been what touched her foot. The men go on a photographic slash spear hunting dive to look for the living creature. Dr. Reed tries to take pictures, while Dr. Williams shoots the creature with a spear. However, the creature escapes. Why'd you shoot? You weren't attacked. You sound as though I put the harpoon through you. So what makes you think we're supposed to play tag with the thing, whatever it is? I tell you, we can learn more from it if it's alive. Please, what is it you found? I don't know what you got. It sounds incredible, but it appeared to be human. I tell you, if it's what I think I saw, it's the greatest find yet. Nothing compares to it. When they get back on the boat, Captain Lucas tells them he knows of a legend of a gill man that lives underwater. Wait, 
You knew this already, and you didn't mention it. None of the pictures of the creature show the beast. While the main group is below deck, the gill man comes on board and kills one of the deck hands. <coughs> Dr. Reed builds a super strong bamboo cage tied together with rope. Captain Lucas says he has some fish poison that will stun aquatic animals. I don't want him creeping up on us while we're sleeping. I know where to bring him up now, eh? Rope or no? He's a drug which the natives make from roots for catching fish in still waters. Sometimes I catch fish that way. I show you. Look. Excuse me. One taste of the poison water and whew, the paralyzed fish floats up to the top with a big hangover. Doctors Reed and Williams go out in the rowboat and spread the poison while the creature watches from below. A lot of fish float up, but no gill man. They reconfigure the poison to sink deeper into the water and try again. That night, the gill man, who is slightly stoned, climbs onto the Rita, but is stunned by the light of a lantern. They see his weight cutting across the surface as the creature retreats to his lair. They hit him with a spotlight, at which point he stands up and growls before dropping back into the water. Doctors Reed and Williams enter the water in an attempt to catch the creature. The two find a dry cave where the creature has retreated. The gill man is staggering around like he's on a bender. The creature goes out the back of the cave where he finds Dr. K sitting by the water. The second deckhand tries to protect her, and he meets his end. <coughs> Dr. K takes one step, and then she trips. The monster picks her up but quickly passes out. They lock the gill man in the bamboo cage in the water at the back of the boat. Depends on whether he can survive both the rope known and being out of the water so long. You sound as though you feel sorry for him. Why? He could have killed you just as easily. But he didn't. Doctors Reed and Williams go back to document the cave and leave Dr. Thompson with only one job. Just one job. Watch the creature. He relaxes in a chair, smoking his pipe with his back to the creature that is staring wide-eyed from the water below. Hi. Let's I come up and get some air. Doctors Thompson and Kay get into a big debate about how much she owes Dr. Williams and would it be okay if she marries Dr. Reed. The gill man breaks out and attacks Dr. Thompson. Thompson smashes a gas lantern on the creature who, now on fire, dives into the water. Thompson survives, but just barely. Dr. Reed wants to leave, and Dr. Williams turns into Captain Ahab. No. No. No, you can't get away. From hell's heart, I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath. When Dr. Williams tries to prevent the captain from taking the boat out of the lagoon, Captain Lucas puts a knife to his throat and calmly explains that the captain is in charge on the water. We are staying until we get him. Or until somebody else gets killed. No, we're not. Lucas, we're getting out of here just as fast as we can. I'll make the decisions around here. Oh, but you are wrong, Mr. Williams. On the water, the Capitan makes the decisions. We will do as you say. You will listen to me. You wish to say something, mister? Eh? <sighs> Dr. Mayo, will you please to pull up the anchor? When they try to leave, the entrance to the lagoon is blocked by logs that the creature placed in the way. Dr. Reed attaches the winch cable to the logs, but they can't pull it up as the gill man breaks the cable. Dr. Reed says he is going back down with the aqualung. Dr. Williams wants to continue to hunt the creature. They get into a fight, and Dr. Williams is left below deck. While working on the cable, Dr. Reed is attacked, and Dr. Williams shows up and shoots the creature with the spear gun. Dr. Williams loses sight of the gill man, who grabs him behind and drags him down, fatally wounding him. <coughs> Dr. Reed comes to the rescue a little too late and shoots at the creature. Back on the boat, they mix up the last of the poison to spray out of an applicator. While they are doing that, the creature reaches through the portal above the wounded Dr. Thompson. They chase him away. Dr. Reed goes into the water, and after a couple of tries, he doses the creature. As they head out, they don't see the creature come aboard the Rita. He grabs Dr. K, jumps into the water, and takes her back to his pad. Dr. Reed, 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 D
You got to give that boy credit for single-minded determination. Dr. Reed follows with a resupply of spears. When he gets to the cave, a giant bat flies by, and for a second it seems that this is a leftover prop from a Dracula movie. The creature attacks Dr. Reed. About that time, Dr. Mia and Captain Lucas come in the other side of the cave and shoot the creature several times. The creature stumbles back into the water, but Dr. Reed won't let the men finish him off. The creature sinks into the water, possibly dead. At least until the sequel. Makeup department head Bud Westmore took credit for the design of the creature, but most of the work was done by Millicent Patrick. The look of the creature was based on the Oscar Award, and the head came from the 17th century sea monk carving. This movie is a love story. The lonely fella, probably the last of his kind, felt the same way about Julie Adams in her white bathing suit as we all did. For this, he got speared, poisoned, shot, and burned. World famous short summary. Country boy falls for big city girl. Things turn out bad for the boy. The EPUB for subscribers is on the site, so drop by and get your copy. If you enjoyed this week's show, please tell your friends. And if you really want to help, drop over to iTunes and give me a review. If you want to comment, recommend a movie, or just say hi, follow the links in the show notes to my site. Beware the moors.